is up guys welcome back to life on the wrist happy monday um the results for the december swiss watch exports were released um we're going to be going over some of the um statistics that were released um about the swiss watch exports um, and give you my thoughts about how we ended up um, kind of ending the year of 2019 and what i think the future of 2020 is going to look like uh, but before we get into that if you haven't already be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel um so i thought i would kind of give a recap of the November episode that we made. Um, we started this series last month where we kind of go over these these numbers and discuss um, the results from uh, the Swiss watch export numbers. So in November, um, exports, exports were actually down by 2 billion Swiss francs, which is about 3.5% year over year. And the major factor that kind of contributed to this decline was the political, political tension that was occurring in Hong Kong. Um, there was also a large decline in exports of watches that were under 3,000 Swiss francs uh, in price. Um, so I think that kind of shows a weakening middle class and those who are not really purchasing super, super high-end watches perhaps don't have as mu much disposable income to spend on, wa on luxury items like watches. Um, watches that were over 3,000 Swiss francs were pr pretty stable. I think they were a little bit higher um, year over year. So. Um, that kind of shows th those who have uh, quite a bit of disposable income still are purchasing watches. So there's still a lot of interest in, in, in this industry. Um, so today we're going to discuss the month of December's numbers. Um, I have the, the statistics in front of me on my computer. So if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. Um, so the first thing I'm going to go to is the December month monthly analysis. Um, and looking at it, um, you can see that um, there was an increase in Swiss watch exports by 5.8%, um, which was approximately 1.7 million Swiss francs worth of watches. This is, um, this is obviously a really great sign um, for, um, for December. It's a fairly strong number um, for December, um, which is great. Uh, I think... Uh, you know that one of the things that they mentioned as being a, a very important factor for these numbers was um, the exports to China. Um, the Chinese New Year was happening a little bit earlier this year, and so than previous years. So a lot of the times, watches are a gift that are that that, that are purchased um, during this time. Um, for the year, um, the the uh, as a whole um, for the 2019, the uh, Swiss watch exports were equivalent to about 21. 0.7 billion Swiss francs, which was an increase of 2.4% from um, 2018. So as a whole, 2019 uh, Swiss watch exports, exports were up about 2.4%. Um, now, one thing that is should be considered is it's not really that significant. I mean, I think inflation was at, is at about 1.7%. So it's not a significant increase. Um, you know, it's I think that's a very, very respectable increase in Swiss watch exports that obviously people are buying more, but I don't think, think it's significant to say like, oh, there's really going to be a change in, in, in buying patterns or perhaps um, the market as a whole. I think it's just a very consistent increase, kind of year over year increase. Um, what was interesting though is um, looking at the breakdown of wristwatches by price categories, we still saw a huge decrease in both units and value for watches that sold under 3,000 Swiss francs. Um, namely, Swiss watches under $200 were down, units were down by about 13%. Um, watches between 500 and 3,000 Swiss francs were down by 9%. That's a, a dramatic decrease. Um, and obviously year over year, that's probably not a good sign. It's probably showing, it's, a, it's, it's showing that there is um, definitely a, a, a declining, um, a, a smaller pool of uh, people within the middle class who have disposable income to spend on these types of watches. But watches over 3,000 Swiss francs increased both by units and values. Um, units increased by about 10% and value increased by about 13%. So um, interesting uh, results there. I think it's it's pointing to a slowing, a slowing economy. Disposable incomes part, probably aren't as flexible as they were um, in past years. So um, that was interesting. I think there's also probably, these numbers are probably a little bit um, boosted by the fact that the holiday season was uh, was in the month of December, as it always is. 
um, people are probably purchasing gifts for individuals and that probably has something to do with uh, Swiss watch export numbers. I will say that Chinese New Year obviously has a huge impact on the amount of watches that were exported and purchased. I think um, that really does show why there was such a, uh, a fairly high um, increase at 5.8%, uh, especially being that in the month of November, we were down about 3.5%. Um, year over year, like I said, 2.4% increase um, year over year. I don't think it's very significant. I think it's simple growth that um, kind of is inevitable with a, a, an expanding cycle. I, I think this might be uh, a little bit different um, within this next coming year. So um, be interesting to take a look at that. Um, if you look at the main markets uh, for uh, December, you can see China obviously led the way at 200 and, 211 million Swiss francs, which was a change of about 50% year over year, which is pretty incredible when you when you kind of put that in perspective. 50% um, increase is extremely high. Um, second was uh, the US with 191.5 million Swiss francs, which is up by 9.5%. And third, Hong Kong with 186 million Swiss francs, interestingly down 20% year over year because of the political tensions that are occurring there right now. However, they're still ranked third for the month of December with such a dramatic decline in, in, in um, watch exports year over year, which is incredible, I think. Uh, Japan was uh, fourth with 106 million, which is up about 2%. And then Singapore was fifth with 104 million, 105 million Swiss francs, which was up 25.1%. So once again, main markets are Asia. Uh, Asian countries really dominate um, the purchasing of, of, of watches. I think this, it, we've seen it the entire year. And I think this, this is a perfect example of, of what it is. Um, uh, kind of the, the breakdown of, of what watch exports would be uh, um, just for the year. So I have the numbers for 2019. Um, 2019, the country that export that imported the most Swiss watches was Hong Kong with 2.659 billion Swiss francs, which is down 11.4% year over year, which is incredible to think about because of all the political tensions that occurred there, they were still leading in um, imports for Swiss watches, which is incredible. Second is the US with 2.4 billion Swiss francs, which is up eight, uh, about 9%. Third was China with 1.99 billion Swiss francs, which was up 16.1%. Japan, 1.6 billion uh, Swiss francs, which was up about 20%. And the UK coming in fifth with 1.36 uh, billion Swiss francs, which is up about 11%. So again, the top five for, for the year of 2019, obviously super strong within Asia, um, US and UK, which are obviously major markets for, for Swiss, the Swiss watches um, coming in uh, within the top five. Uh, what um, is interesting to me uh, for the yearly stats is the fact that we, you know, up 2.4%, uh, really isn't, I, I feel it really isn't that significant. Um, you know, 2.4% is just kind of like a regular growth rate for me. Um, I, I'm going to be, it's going to be interesting to see what 2020 holds. I do think that global economies are slowing. I don't think, um, I think if we kind of go through the charts that I, that I was going through, I think we will continue to see, um, we'll see probably a slowing growth of Swiss watch exports for um, the next year, I think the 12 month moving average is going to probably decrease to closer to um, maybe 1% uh, for for this next year. I don't see um, individuals probably getting more disposable income. So if you look at the breakdown of the prices, wristwatches by price categories, you're probably looking at a continued decline of watches on beneath $3,000 and probably um, watches within that uh, above 3,000 Swiss francs margin, you're probably still looking at probably just holding that consistently. I think those who have money can still purchase those watches. Um, the upper class is obviously, um, you know, filled with people who are going to buy these types of watches and and they're going to have the money to do so. Um, I did find the, the, uh, the breakdown of um, the breakdown of, you know, an average of all the Wrist watches part price category is interesting, you know, down nine percent for units. Uh, so people are purchasing obviously less watches, but the values have gone up about six point five percent. So probably in preparation for the holiday season, those went up. I will say per perhaps the demand 
um, for those watches above 3,000 Swiss francs probably um, was a, a leading factor there as well. So um, interesting results for the month, month of December. Um, 2019 as a whole up 2.4%. I don't think that's probably as significant. I think if there weren't political tensions within Hong Kong, they'd probably be a lot higher, especially because year on year, Hong Kong was down about 12%. So that probably can be attributed to a lot of the, you know, relatively conservative numbers that came out for the year. Um, 2020, I think is going to be a rocky year. I, I don't think it's going to be as, you know, consistent. I think there's a lot going on in 2020. I can perhaps, um, you know, decline the, the exports that, that are coming out of Switzerland, but it's going to be interesting to see to see how they do. Um, I envision, you know, Asia still to lead the way when it comes to the amount of watches that are being purchased and the, the, the price points. I think Hong Kong, China, Japan, I think Singapore might might kind of, um, you know, grow a little bit a little bit quicker as well. So I still envision them doing extremely well. Um, so yeah, interesting numbers to come out for December. Uh, I'll make sure to put up all the graphs so you can see them. I'll also put a link to where you can find these reports. Um, check out our, we did a report on lifeontherisk.com. So check out our blog. There you can see where we kind of outline all of these numbers. Um, it's, it's very cool. 2019 was, uh, I guess, a, a fairly consistent year for, for Swiss watch exports. So it's always great when your hobby uh, ends up doing better, uh, doing well. So. Um, if you guys have made it this far and you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel if you like this type of video or if you like watches. We do all kinds of videos about watches. We talk about watchmaking legends. We talk about watches that were released. We do, you know, watches that we source for our store. We make videos about those as well. So be sure to check out our other videos. Also, smash that like button for us. It really does help us out. And with that said, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time.